Hey, good morning, good afternoon, everyone, depending on where you are in the country. Uh, welcome to our StreamYard today. Uh, my name is Steve Weibel. I'm here with Crest Street, and today we have an interesting topic we're going to talk about. What the SBA wants to see on your business tax returns. I get asked this question a lot. You know, can I get approved for an SBA loan? Well, it's obviously going to depend. One of the things is your business credit profile. That's super important. Uh, but they certainly are going to look at your business's tax returns. And there are certain things they're looking for. And today we're going to dive in. It's a little bit complicated. We're going to get into the weeds here pretty heavy. But uh, I promise you it's worth hanging around. Uh, by the way, my crack team of social media managers are here to answer any and all questions. Just go ahead and put your question somewhere below or somewhere in our chat box, and we'll answer it to the best of our ability. Uh, again, my name is Steve Weibel. I am not Ty Crandall. Let me click on this. He's on vacation. He's enjoying the holidays with his family. We're super happy that he took some time off for himself. You know, he puts out hundreds and hundreds of videos, uh, and we love when he has an opportunity to take some time to reset and come back with some even better and bigger and stronger content. As a matter of fact, don't forget, you may not even know about it. We've got a webinar coming up at the beginning of the year, How to Build Business Credit in 2022, the little inside secrets and tips. Ty's going to be hosting. It's going to be fantastic. And don't forget to get business credit with your EIN. Go to creditsuite.com forward slash EIN. We love that you're here. All right, let's dive in. And I apologize. I am not an accountant, so a lot of this stuff I knew a little bit about. So I'm going to learn on the way. We're going to have fun doing it. Oh, and by the way, don't forget to give us a little like down below, right? Let us know you're here. Let us know that you love what we're doing for you. All right. So the SBA, the Small Business Administration, is your business tax returns and you. For businesses hoping for financing from the SBA, I'm going to open this up a little bit because my eyes aren't as good as they used to be. Uh, understanding all your requirements is obviously necessary. Today, we're going to look at what the SBA specifically wants and how the SBA educates entrepreneurs on how to file their taxes. I'm going to stop here for a second. The SBA literally educates you on what they want. They teach you how to file your taxes the right way, right? So that way you don't screw it up. This is because what the SBA teaches businesses is what they want to see, right? So filling, your return, filling out your returns properly is job one. You've got to make sure it's done correctly. The SBA strongly suggests that entrepreneurs work with accounting and or tax professionals. And by the way, I am not one. I don't play one on TV. Give me the best of my ability today, the information I'm going to give you. Uh, but obviously, you want to speak to your accountant and or your tax attorney, all right? Well-prepared, thorough forms don't just help you get an SBA loan. They also, by the way, keep your business from being audited. If you've ever been audited, you know what I'm talking about. It's not a good time, all right? Don't forget, get your free business credit reports at creditsuite.com forward slash monitoring. See what's on there. See if you are ready for that SBA loan. We give you the blueprint, I promise you. By the way, if you have additional questions, reach out to us at 877-600-2487. Again, that's 877-600-2487. All right. So SBA loans. The SBA offers a variety of loans. These include loans for seasonal businesses, construction, et cetera. Obviously, most people here know about the PPP loans, the Paycheck Protection Program, which were created to help small businesses during this pandemic we've been living through for a couple of years. Uh, so let's start with some forms that every business is going to need to provide. So there are certain necessary tax documents for an SBA loan. Now, I'm going to read some numbers here today. I'm not going to put up samples because this would be a uh, three and a half hour uh, live stream. We want to give you as much information as quickly as possible. And I know I talk fast. Go back and watch the recording. <laughs> so first thing is going to be IRS form 4506-T must be completed and signed by the applicant business. It must be signed by each principal owning 20% or more of the applicant business, each general partner or managing member. And for any owner who has more than 50% ownership in an affiliate business. So in other words, another business. Affiliate business can include the business parent, subsidiaries, and or businesses with common ownership or management. Okay? They need complete copies, including all schedules of the most recent federal income tax returns for the applicant's business and or an explanation if it's not available. So in other words, if you apply for an SBA loan in December or maybe October, November, you're obviously not going to have the most recent federal income tax returns. You'll have to provide last year's returns. Uh, remember, that happened a lot during the PPP. All right. So there are potential additional tax documents needed for an SBA loan. Complete copies, including all schedules of the most recent federal income tax returns for each principal owning 20% or more of the applicant business, each general partner or managing member, and each affiliate if any owner has more than a 50% ownership in the affiliate business. In other words, your personal tax returns is what they're talking about. Affiliates are going to include, but not limited to, once again, business parents, subsidiaries, and or other businesses with common ownership or management. If the most recent federal income tax has not been filed, 
then a year-end profit and loss statement and balance sheet for that tax year is acceptable. Matter of fact, let's talk about the 2020 and 2021 PPP loans. In 2000, 2019, taxes did not have to be filed before applying for this particular loan, but they were asked to submit IRS Form 4506T. This gives the SBA access to historical tax returns. Uh, the form must be signed once again by owners with more than 50% stake in an affiliate business. Principals only 20% more of, of the applicant business, and each partner or managing partner must sign. Now, let's look at the form specific to various business entity types, because not everybody out here has the same entity type, and there's going to be different forms required for each and every entity type. All right. By the way, if you want a free business credit consultation, don't forget, reach out to us at 877-600-2487. Tell my team you want to set yourself up for an SBA loan. Right? You want to learn how to build that business credit profile? Don't kid yourself. They look at it. All right. So these are tax forms that a partnership needs to fill out for all SBA loans. They're going to file form, files form 1065, U.S. Partnership Return of Income, information only. Each partner receives a Schedule K-1, Form 1065, partner share of income, credit, deductions, et cetera. See page 1 through 13 in publication 1066. Good luck trying to remember all this. Uh, partner completes Schedule E of Form 1040 and is certainly subject to self-employment tax. Check out publication 541. Uh, they must have a written partnership agreement. By the way, if you have a partnership, have a written partnership agreement. You don't want to screw this up. This is a big deal. Everything seems hunky-dory when you first start, but when things get a little complicated or maybe they grow, people, you know, greed starts to kick in. Maybe people have different ideas to where they want the business to go. So have a written partnership agreement, including a buy-sell agreement if applicable. All right. You want to have it drafted by an attorney. Accountants cannot give legal advice. They can give tax advice but not legal advice. The IRS advises partners to spend the money now for a proper setup to save long and costly battles in the future. If you've ever been through a partnership that breaks up, no different than a divorce. Remember, I feel like it's worse than a divorce, right? Because you're fighting over every little thing. Everybody wants control of the business. Get yourself a written partnership agreement, okay? It's not that difficult. All right, so these are tax forms that corporations need to fill out for an SBA form. An S Corp or an S Corporation files form 1120S. 1120S. You can make an election to be tax like tax like a partnership. Use form 2553 to make such an election. So in other words, even though you're an S corporation, you can elect how you want to be taxed. All right. You'll need to file form 2553 by the 15th day of the third month of the year to be treated like an S corporation. An S corporation does not pay tax on income from daily operations. All income losses, deductions, and credits generated by the S-Corp pass through to its shareholders, all right? Shareholders receive what's called a K-1, Form 1120S, shareholder share of income, credits, deductions, et cetera. And then the shareholder completes Schedule E of 1040 tax, right? An S-Corporation is not subject to self-employment tax, SE tax, but wages are subject to FICA. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you a quick history. Uh, when I first started my S-Corporation, uh, I had a partner, and at the end of the year, we hadn't taken any money out. So our account said, look, you're going to need to take some some wages because they're subject to FICA, and then we'll issue your Schedule K-1. So we wanted to make sure we got ourselves on payroll the last day of the year, pay the IRS you know, their fair share, and then moved on. Also, check Form 1120S instructions in Form 2553. So that's S corporations. <clears throat> now we move to the big one, C corporations. A C corporation files Form 1120 U.S. corporation income tax return. All right. Corporations are treated by the law as legal entities treated separately from its owners. This affords individual liability protection. Remember, we did a live stream on this uh, a few weeks back. This is a big deal. This is truly the only entity that is completely separate from its owners, completely separate from its owners, a C corporation. All right. Shareholders receive dividends with a 1099 DIV form and the employees who actually work there receive a form W-2. So if uh, if we together owned a C corporation and I was running the corporation, you were an investor, <clears throat> you would get dividends and you would get that 1099 DIV form. If I was running the company, I would actually get a W-2 form. I would get on payroll. OK, that's the difference. All right. Employees of C corporation are not subject to self-employment tax, but they still have to pay income tax on their earnings. OK. Corporate shareholders should check publication 542. Note, there is a possible double taxation with a C corporation. I don't want to dive into it today, talk to your accountant, but I've seen this happen. Matter of fact, it's happened to me. There's a chance that you can be double taxed when you own a C corporation. 
all right? LLC, this is what the majority of you are going to own, an LLC and or a sole proprietor, which we're going to dive into. An LLC is formed by filing a certificate of formation with the Secretary of State. This is not a federal tax entity. See publication 3402, again, publication 3402. A multiple member LLC is generally considered a partnership, all right? A single member LLC is generally considered a disregarded entity and it files as a sole proprietor because all profits pass through right to the owner, right? <clears throat> as a single member. An LLC can elect to be treated as a C corporation using form 8832 or an S corporation using form 2553. I know, like I said, we're going to dive into the weeds today, ladies and gentlemen, and this is kind of where we're at. LLCs are popular because owners have limited personal liability for the debts and actions of the LLC without many of the formalities of a real corporation. Okay, so keep that in mind. An LLC is not a separate entity. However, it does afford the owners some limited liability, right? That's why it's called limited liability corporation. Okay. Sole proprietorship. This is what the majority of people are that I talk to uh, that own a business. They own a sole proprietorship. And this is what they're going to need to fill out for an SBA loan. This is the most common entity type. There are literally 23 million taxpayers that filed a Schedule C in 2014. Uh, this is the simplest and cheapest form of a business entity. It is formed with one owner. <clears throat> you will need to file a master license application with the Department of Revenue in your state. All right, income flows to the individual via Schedule C. One major drawback is the owner cannot be on payroll. So if you're a sole proprietor, all the income comes to you. You cannot be on payroll. You're not treated separately. As far as the IRS is concerned, you and the business are one and the same. You need to be very disciplined in budgeting for your taxes. I made this mistake years ago. I was a sole proprietor, didn't put myself on payroll, didn't budget properly for taxes, made more money than I expected, and lo and behold, the IRS came to say hello. Uh, so you don't, you want to be really, really disciplined. You have to make estimated tax payments, and per the IRS, anyone considering a sole proprietor should spend some time with accounting and or tax professionals to see if this setup is right. Keep in mind, it's really going to be based on your sales, on your income, right? There are times when a sole proprietorship is super beneficial. There are times it's not. I can tell you from a building business credit point of view, there really is no separation here. Uh, so if the sole proprietor is getting credit, it's based on the owner getting personal credit, all right? Now look, no matter what business you own, record keeping requirements for all businesses are super important, right? They have to support the income and deductions that show amount, time, place, purpose. You must keep receipts, sales slips, invoices, bank deposit slips, cancel checks. Now, a lot easier today. You have things like QuickBooks. Uh, and most things are now digital. It's significantly easier than it was back in my day when every check I wrote came back from the bank. We had to keep a file monthly, whatever. Um, that was not a lot of fun. That's why we had a whole team for, um, for our accounting department. But even though it's a lot easier now, it's important that you enter that information, right? Other, and you need other documents to substantiate your income and deductions. And please, please use a separate bank account for business. Even if you're a sole proprietor, use a separate bank account for business, all right? You want to keep your business and personal as separate as possible. Just from an accounting point of view, it's a lot easier. And by the way, speaking of accounting point of view, let's talk about the different methods that the IRS actually accepts. With cash accounting method, Reported in, you report the income when you actually receive the check and or wire or whatever. You deduct expenses when they are actually paid. This is only good for about up to one million in sales. Works for most businesses, all right? However, anybody doing over a, a, a million dollars in sales is going to want to work on the accrual accounting method, all right? Now, this is a big deal. Now, today is the, I believe, the 28th. Let's check our calendar. Today is the 28th. And... If you're doing the accrual accounting method and you're thinking about building your business credit, you need to reach out to us at 877-600-2487 because with the accrual accounting method, you report income when earned regardless of when paid, but you deduct expenses when incurred regardless of when paid. So in other words, if you buy our program today, right, whether you set it up on a monthly payment or a full pay, uh, you're going to be able to deduct the expenses when you incur them, which is when we create the invoice. So if you were thinking about it, you were kind of borderline, and you're looking for a little bit of a tax write-off this year, what a great opportunity. Call us at 877-600-2487. Reach out to us. We'll get you set up today. We want to get you set up prior to the 31st, which I believe we're closed on the 31st. So up to the 30th, you want to reach out, get yourself set up on our business credit building program. It's education. It's a it's a tax write-off, right? It's an expense, and, it's in, and you get to write it off when you incurred the expense, not when you paid it, all right? For both methods, you want to take a look at publication 538 with the IRS, all right? 
The SBA, of course, insists you fill out all forms correctly, right? All of them. Report all incomes and losses and only take deductions to which you're entitled, obviously, right? These are basically the IRS rules, right? The SBA provide detailed information on what it expects to see on your returns because it's virtually identical to what the IRS expects to see on your returns, right? Here are some nuances for filling out a business tax return which apply to many entrepreneurs and industries. Okay, told you we're in the weeds and we're not even close. Uh, it includes all income for your business received ex unless excluded by law, such as income from a sale or product or for your services. This includes bartering. You need to use Form 1099-B and other types of income. The IRS advises business owners to keep really, really good records, obviously, right? To be deductible, expenses must, must pass certain what we call smell test, right? The expense must be ordinary. It must be necessary to your business. It must be incurred and or paid by you, the business owner, right? Your business. Um, however, they do allow you to amortize startup costs. You can choose to amortize certain startup costs for setting up your business over a period of 180 months and or 15 years. A startup cost is amortizable if it meets both the following tests. Is a cost you could deduct if you paid or incurred it is to operate an existing trade or business in the same field. And is a cost you pay or incur before the day your active trade or business begins. Okay. So uh, you might want to amortize the cost of, let's say you're setting up a telemarketing firm. Uh, you want to, you have to buy 20 computers. You may want to amortize that cost over a period of the next 15 years. Uh, you know, I'm thinking in terms of manufacturing facilities, uh, you know, million dollar pieces of equipment, things like that. All right. However, Unfortunately, you're limited to $50,000, right? There's a $50,000 limit on startup costs that you can amortize over 15 years. To me, I kind of want to write it all off quickly. Matter of fact, speaking of writing off quickly, car and truck expenses. This is a big one, right? If you use no more than four vehicles at the same time for business purposes, you may use the standard mileage rate. I don't remember what that rate is now. I know they've raised it. To use the standard mileage rate on a vehicle after the first year of business use, you must have used the standard mileage rate the first year. OK, so if you if you write off, if you don't use the standard mileage the first year, you can't use it the second year. OK, in later years, you can alternate between standard mileage and actual expenses. Right. But if you used actual expenses in the first year, you can never alternate. So in other words, our suggestion would be use the standard mileage rate the first year. Then you can change based on what best suits you, what's going to give you the best write off after that. All right. But if you start off with actual expenses the first year, you can't alternate. You're always stuck with the actual expenses. To find out more about standard mileage rate and the actual expense method, see publication number 463. I'm going to pause right here. Publication 463 under travel, entertainment, gift, and car expenses. Again, any questions? Crack team's here to answer. Go ahead and reach out to you. They'll be happy to answer your questions. Okay. Car and truck expenses. Commuting expenses are not allowed. Rather, deductible local transportation expenses may include getting from one place of work to another. So in other words, you're driving from office A to office B and you own both, right? Visiting clients, this is pretty much what I did my entire life, or customers, or going to a business meeting. Now, again, you're going to talk to your accountant. I always made sure I had a meeting with a client prior to heading to my office. Uh, I would not write off the mileage from my house to the client, but I would from the client to the office, okay? So that's one little angle you could take. And there's depreciation. It's the annual deduction allowed to recover the cost of your investment property beyond the current tax year. It is a decrease in the value of property over time. And the property must be used in the business, all right? It must have a determinable life longer than one year, all right? And it must be something that wears out, decays, gets used up, becomes obsolete, or loses value just from natural causes. Equipment is a classic example of this, right? You cannot depreciate land, all right? Intangibles like goodwill, right? Inventory, because inventory is sellable. Right, leased property, property outside the U.S., property used for business less than 50% of the time. Okay, that's the other things you cannot depreciate. Again, talk to your accountant; they'll go through what you've got and tell you what you can and cannot depreciate. Travel expenses. This is abused more than anything else. They, these are ordinary and necessary expenses for traveling away from the business and not your home. All right. Travel expenses include fares air, taxis, et cetera, baggage and shipping, 50% of meals, because remember, you're eating the other half, right? Lodging, et cetera. This also falls under entertainment. These must be ordinary and necessary. They must be either the, either the directly related and or associated test. Only 50% productible, whether you use per diem or actual. It must You must allocate a business portion 
for that entertainment expense, right? Keep receipts that show time, place, and purpose of entertainment, including meals. I used to write down who the client was just to make it easier so I could go back and look at my memory and go, oh, yeah, that's right. I was with John Smith on this day. Here's why we did what we did, right? This is a client. You want to see publication 463 again, travel, entertainment, gift, and car expenses. These are the two areas where people abuse them, and a lot of times it's just through not knowing. Right. So check out publication 463. It gives you the breakdown, the actual rules. You don't want to set yourself up for an audit because once they find one thing wrong, they're going to look everywhere. Right? You want to be really, really careful. All right. There's another one. Business use of your home. Obviously, many businesses start out of homes these days. Remember, people who aren't even just startups are still working out of their homes. The SBA notes that the IRS puts limitations on deductions. Right. Good record keeping, as always, is completely necessary. But some deductions are possible. Right. Deduct expenses related to the business use of part of your home, use form 8829, expenses of the business use of home, and publication 587, which will give you the, the instructions. Your business use of your home must pass certain tests to be accepted. Again, the smell test, right? Exclusive use means you use a specific area of the home only for business, okay? Uh, I can tell you I have a bedroom in my house that I use for my office now that we work from home. 100% that's what this room's used for. I'm not in here for anything else other than business. Uh, there are exceptions for storage and daycare facilities. All right. Regular use means the area must be used on a regular basis. I'm in here every day. This would count, right? This would 100% count. But I can tell you, uh, when you when you write off a home office, it's semi-red flag for the IRS. So once again, talk to your accountant, make sure it's okay, make sure it makes good sense for you, all right? Trade or business use means an area must be used in connection with a trade or a business, right? Uh, maybe you're a woodworker and all your equipment's in your garage and everything you build, you build in your garage. You've never parked a car in there. You don't store your Christmas tree in there. Uh, you don't store any decorations. That's basically your shop. That's a classic example of use of home, okay? That's a great use of home test. A portion of your home is used exclusively on a regular basis as your principal place of business or a place of business used by your patients, clients, or customers to meet or deal with the normal course of business or a separate structure you use in connection with your business, okay? So that's the business use of home. Don't forget to check those documents, check that, that form, make sure that you fit in if you're planning on writing off a section of your home as your office. All right, self-employment tax. Let me explain what self-employment tax is. Self-employment tax is nothing more than Social Security and Medicare taxes, all right? When you work for someone else, they actually pay half and you pay half. So when you look at, if, you're, if you've ever been on payroll and you look at your Social Security taxes, you're going to see on your Medicare, you're going to see X amount comes out of you, but the, the business owner actually matches that, okay? This shocked me my first time this happened. When I first became self-employed in the ripe old age of 22, uh, I had no idea about self-employment tax. When you work for yourself, you pay all of it, all right? Sole proprietors and partners are subject to the self-employment tax. If your net profit from self-employment is $400 or more, you must file ten, Form 1040, Schedule SC, self-employment tax, okay? Here's the thing. It's not the tax that's so bad. It's the penalties. You want to avoid these penalties, and obviously, you want to do the right thing, right? You want to file an accurate, timely, and correct return. There is a 20% accuracy related penalty if you understand tax liability, do, if you understate your tax liability due to one negligence, substantial valuation misstatements, substantial understatement of the tax, and there's a 75% civil fraud penalty. You don't want this, right? For felony criminal fraud, it's combined penalty of 5% per month and 4.5% late filing and a half percent late payment. It's a big deal. Right. So you want to be as accurate as possible. Obviously, they're not expecting you to be you know, a mathematician and have it down to the penny. Things happen. But you want to be fairly accurate. Matter of fact, my suggestion was always to overpay when you're doing your quarterly uh, estimated pay tax payments. If you overpay, it's great. You get a little bit of a refund and or they use it for a car carry over the next year uh, with your choice. So an accurate, timely and correct return might not get you an SBA loan by itself. But I can promise you an inaccurate, late, or incorrect return will tank your application for an SBA loan immediately. Not to mention, you're going to have to pay penalties, right? So work with a tax or accounting professional. Get your business taxes right the first time, every time. And obviously, the key to that is good record keeping. Uh, so listen, we got this done in 29, 28 minutes. The recap, ensure the SBA wants to see what the IRS wants to see. So it's, it's parallel. It's exactly what they want to see. There are a variety of forms and schedules to cover a multitude of circumstances. Make sure you understand which ones they are. If you're unsure, ask your accounting professional. 
Uh, understand depreciation, how to declare your home as a place of business will help you prepare a more accurate and complete tax return. And work with a tax or accounting professional to assure your returns are as good as they can possibly be, right? Don't chintz out here. This is the one place you should never be cheap. Look, if, uh, if you were being charged with a major felony, you wouldn't go to court without an attorney, right? You'd want to get an attorney to work with you. You don't want to file your taxes without a professional accounting firm and or tax professional, right? Let them help you. They can always find things that maybe you weren't aware of. I'm sure we opened a few eyes here today. They know way more than we do about this, all right? This helps you get SBA loans and also helps you avoid the penalties. If you want more information, please see this presentation's description down below. And while you're down there, give us a little bit of a like. Say hello. Hey, Steve, nice to see you, all right? And don't forget, get your free business credit reports at creditsuite.com forward slash monitoring. Next time, and I believe it'll be me. I'm here for a couple of days, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to do a 2021 business credit review. What's working for your company in the realm of business credit? What's not, not working so well? How to position your business so you can improve your business credit in 2022. I love being here today. Thank you so much for letting me hang out with you. Don't forget, this was about what the SBA wants to see on your business tax returns. You can contact us for more information at 877 600 Two four eight seven. Simply reach out to us at info at Love seeing everybody. Hope you have a great day. See you tomorrow.